Hello and welcome to the lecture series on monetary economics. In the previous classes, we have seen the definition of a bank, then we built our idea of what a commercial bank is, and then we moved into looking at the different services rendered by a bank as well as the functions of a bank. In today's class, I'll be talking about the commercial banks with the perspective of a public sector bank, that to the State Bank of India. In the previous class, I have given you a background as to what are public sector banks, private sector banks, foreign banks, as well as regional rural banks. So if you haven't watched that video, I'll just put the link in the description below so you can please go and check that video as well. So let's get started. To understand the State Bank of India and its management, in today's class, I'll give you a brief idea of its historical background and take you to the various subsidiaries of the State Bank of India and or associates of the same. So let's get started. Now, uh, back then in the 19, uh, to be very precise, in the 1800s, in the 1900s and 1800s, there were presidency banks established at Co uh, Kolkata, Bombay and Madras presidency respectively. The first bank, which is Bank of Kolkata, came into existence in 1806. Then we had the Bank of Bombay, which was 1840. It was established in 1840. And then we have Bank of Madras in 1843. These three banks started from 1800s and operated till the 1921. Why? Because in 1921, all the three banks were amalgamated or clubbed together to form something called as the Imperial Bank of India. Now, this Imperial Bank of India operated from 1921 up until 1955 when this Imperial Bank of India was nationalized by passing the State Bank of India Act 1955 and this led to the establishment of something called as the State Bank of India or SBI. Now the State Bank of India is the largest commercial bank in India and it is one of the largest commercial banks in the world if, if you see. So this bank is a is a consortium or it is a collection of different associates as well as subsidiaries. So let us look into greater details who are the associate banks of State Bank of India and what are its different subsidies. So whenever I look at the associates of State Bank of India, these banks are the first is bank the State Bank of Bikaner and Jaipur. Then we have the State Bank of Hyderabad. Then we have the State Bank of Indore. Then we have State Bank of Mysore, State Bank of Patiala. State Bank of Saurashtra and State Bank of Trivancore. Now these seven banks are linked with what you call the parent organization, the State Bank of India. And these associates together form the major consortium or the major bulk of any financial institution to be very precise in India. It is the commercial banking sector. So this is how you look at the State Bank of India from a different perspective. Let us now look at the non-banking subsidiaries of State Bank of India. Now these non-banking subsidiaries are SBI Capitals and Market Limited, SBI Fund Management Private Limited, then we have SBI Factors and Commercial Services, then we have SBI Cards and Payment Services, then we have SBI DFHI Limited and Life Insurance Company as well as the General Insurance Company of the State Bank of India. These are the non-banking subsidiaries of the State Bank of India. So collectively, the entire bulk is uh, under a parent organization, which is called as the State Bank of India. And hence, now you can sense that it has been established as a commercial bank, which is the largest commercial bank in India, to be very precise, and one of the largest commercial banks in the world. Let us now look into the uh, current happening, which is uh, there, that is the current edition. So there's a bank called as Bharatiya Mahila Bank, which was merged with the State Bank of India and its associates in 2017. So this is the recent edition. You can please uh, go and Google about more of uh, these institutes individually, that is Bharatiya Mahila Bank, as well as the different associates and the subsidiaries of the same. I'll just uh, put a, a link in the description so that you can probably go and check that as well. Now, let us look at this is the national presence of State Bank of India, that is the State Bank of India present in the domestic territory. Now, let us look at what are the different branches of State Bank of India around the world. Now, these branches can be found or the presence of SBI can be found in various countries in the world that to most of the developed countries. So first is Moscow, that is Russia, then we have Colombo, that is Sri Lanka, then we have Dhaka, that is Bangladesh, then we have Frankfurt, which is Germany, then we have Hong Kong, that is China, then we have Tehran, which is Iran, we have Johannesburg, which is South Africa, then we have London, which is United Kingdom, Los Angeles, that is USA. Then we have Mali, which is uh, Maldives. Then we have Muscat, which is Oman. Then we have Dubai, which is United Arab Emirates. Then we have New York, which is again USA. 
we have sydney which is australia and then we have tokyo which is japan so you can sense that these are all the best cities in the world and sbi has a presence in most of the best cities in the world and that is why it is one of the largest commercial banks in india as well as in the world so i hope the idea is pretty much clear in the next lecture i'll be talking about the management of state bank of india or to be very precise the management structure of any public sector bank in india so please stay tuned thank you